Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new week in my classroom. Today is Tuesday. Since yesterday was President's Day, we were off. And right now the students are in special. So I just wanna quickly show you what we ended up doing this morning for math. And let me give you a glimpse of what we have scheduled for the rest of the day. So this is our schedule for today. We have already completed our math lesson. So let me go ahead and check this off. So we introduced chapter 11 and we went over fractional parts of a circle. They're in music, after that is lunch and recess, and then the students have their White House project due today, so they will be presenting that today. And then we're gonna start a new unit in our Wonder series, which is a poetry unit, I'm excited for that. In writing, we're going to finish off that informative essay that we were working on last week. And then in science, they'll be taking a topic three test on matter. So this morning in math, I was teaching the students how they can use what they already know about fractions to apply to circles. So I gave each student a piece of a 112 part of a circle. Mine didn't turn out to be a perfect 12 piece because some of these pieces I didn't like create them exactly how I should have. See how like if I put this a little bit here, see how it has a spot right there on the left that I missed. So anywho, I told the students it's okay, but basically 1 12th is three parts of a 90 degree angle. And we did that by also showing them a fourth of a circle, which is 90 degrees. See how that doesn't even fit, right? It was my bad for not drawing it correctly, but this is 1 fourth of a circle. And I show the students how it takes three of these 1 12 pieces to make a 1 fourth. 1 fourth is 90. So that means that 1 12th is 30 degrees, since 30 plus 30 plus 30 is 90. We also use a clock to go ahead and have the students also relate that to the fractional parts of a circle, since the clock is a circle. And we use the clock to be able to tell what fraction of a turn was taken according to each illustration. We also learned that 1 12th is equal to five minutes. And one of my students asked me, well, what would one minute be? So that's one out of 60. We divide 360, which is a whole circle by 60. One minute is six degrees, which if you multiply that by five, which is five minutes, that equals 30 degrees, which is what 1 12th is. So just showing the students how we can make angles using a clock and also understanding what is counterclockwise and clockwise as it goes with turning or making turns in a circle. So that is our little lesson for the beginning of chapter 11, which is gonna take us all until next week. All right, I'm actually pretty excited to see the White House projects that the students are gonna to present today, collect those and give those a grade. Also over the weekend, I bought some containers because I wanna put one new storage container in my mailbox downstairs so that I can keep some paper there. And if I need to make copies, which I'm going to need to make copies in a few minutes, I can just grab the paper from there and make copies and keep important papers in that box. So let me show you the boxes that I bought from Amazon and I'll link them down below in case you're interested. It'll just be my affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just gives me a percentage of whatever the total price was. So first of all, love how our social community left us this cute little Valentine's Day treat. It's basically antibacterial wipes. That's why it says spread love, not germs. But these are the containers that I bought. I bought two of these because I wanted to take one with me in my book bag from time to time or just to grade papers. And I bought two because I wanted to keep one in my book bag and possibly fit one in my mailbox. But I just came from downstairs and they don't really fit well in my mailbox. So I'll probably just use them for grading papers, bringing things back and forth from the classroom. So this is pretty cool. It is by Iris. And basically you just open the latch and right here is where you will put all the documents and they're protected from getting all bent and crumpled up and then you just slatch it back on and you're good to go. This is the box, the container that fits perfectly in my mailbox and you're gonna see just a minute because I'm gonna go downstairs and make copies but I absolutely love this container. It's a good width, 
It's a good dimension. It fits very neatly inside of my mailbox and I absolutely love it. So let me get some paper so I can fill it up. I can easily fit one ream of paper in here. So that is awesome. Just came back from making copies of the science test and I placed my box inside my mailbox as you saw and I'm very excited to have it there and ready for me whenever I need it. All right, so I'm gonna get my food ready because it's lunchtime and I'll probably catch up with you at the end of the day. We have now made it to the end of the day and I just wanna let you know what ended up happening. So we actually ended up taking a whole hour for social studies so all students could have the opportunity to present their White House projects. And then we ended up going into reading where we introduced a new poetry unit. Now, I did do something out of schedule and sometimes I do that. I do things that are not planned. And one of those things was to read Love That Dog. Love That Dog is a novel by Sharon Creech and it's actually a very quick read. I'll tell you how quick it was. We actually read the whole entire thing this afternoon, which meant that we didn't have time for the read aloud or the vocabulary review or the shared read or the writing part of our day. I just got into a role and I just kept going with it. And I don't know if you've read this book before, but there's a part of the story that is very sad and we had to take a moment and really talk about what we were feeling and also talk about how there are authors that will make us feel that way and they'll trigger some memory or experiences that we've had. So I did give the students some room to be able to just feel what they were feeling and then just talk about it. And then I showed the weekly opener video, which made a lot of the students laugh which is exactly what they needed. So then since we didn't have time for everything else, we ended up taking our science test at the end of the day, and that is pretty much where our day ended. So that is all that I have to share for today, Tuesdays. So now let's go on and move us on to Wednesday. Hello and welcome to Wednesday. So I'm right now coming to you at the end of the day and I'll show you what we ended up doing today. So this morning, as soon as I came in, I needed a couple students to finish making up some work. So we were working on doing that. That took up most of our reading time in the morning because they were reading assignments that they needed to make up and complete. And then we went ahead and tackled our informative essay. And this is how much we ended up writing today. So this is the informative essay that we've been working on since last week on this informative prompt on which examples of science or explain an example of an advancement in science and how it can be beneficial to others. So before we had already written an introduction. So today I did an I do, we do, and then the students are going to then do a they do. And basically I wrote this paragraph to show them the structure of how we need to Go ahead and answer this prompt. So we started with a transition to move us from the introduction to the body, and then we stated our first idea, reason or idea. And then after that, I went ahead and I did some elaboration, elaboration, over here I introduced some evidence to support that elaboration, and then I elaborate that evidence and I end it with elaboration. Then I decided, because I only had two lines here, to just go to the next page. And the students kind of helped me work on starting to write the second body paragraph, which we had decided that we were working on showing examples of those GMOs. So the first paragraph pretty much explained what GMOs were, and then the second paragraph is showing some examples. So we started by doing a transition with the reason or idea that we're discussing here about examples of genetically modified foods. And we decided to focus on three examples, and we numbered them based on which one we wanted to talk about in which order. So we were gonna talk about tomatoes first, then the rice, and then BT corn. So we started by talking about the tomato, giving an elaboration, evidence, and then elaboration. And then we went over here with another example is, and we are going to start talking about rice. So we started with elaboration, and then giving some evidence, which the author explains that too much phytic acid is not good for humans and how scientists have engineered a type of rice that is low in phytic acid. And then we're gonna talk about the rice that can prevent some forms of blindness. So then the third paragraph the students are gonna do on their own, which they're gonna talk about the benefits that this advancement in science can lead to, which the major one was world hunger. 
the students have only three line pages to write their essay. So we have this amount left, and then we have another page for our last paragraph and our conclusion. So that's what we're working on, and hopefully by tomorrow, this essay will be completely written so that the students can take a timed two-hour informative essay to see how they do on their own. And again, it's two hours because that's how the real test will be timed when they take it in April. And I'm just trying to give them some practice so that they know how to manage their time effectively. And once they take that test, I will score it and we will look at it and we will look for mini lessons that I can teach them here and there to make improvements to their writing. So that's pretty much what we ended up doing in writing. And then it was time for Spanish lunch and then in math we were looking at angles so basically taking what we were learning yesterday about fractional parts and then how to determine the degree of the angle based on the fraction for example if it was a quarter degree turn or one fourth turn that's 90 degrees because we can change one fourth to be an equivalent fraction where it has a denominator of 360 since circles have 360 degrees and if we change the four into 360 we ask well what do we multiply four by to get 360 and that of course is 90. So that is what goes in the denominator and that will give us the degree for one fourth. We did that with a couple of other fractions and students got the opportunity to work on measuring angles with protractors. So I'm giving them a couple of moments in class where they can actually practice using a protractor. They won't use one during the test, but they will have questions where they will show a protractor with an angle and they need to know how to read the protractor to determine the degrees of that angle. So we'll have more practice on that tomorrow. And then at the end of the day, we were going to start working on our science lesson, but our IT guy came to fix the issue we've been having with Minecraft, and that took up the rest of the afternoon, which wasn't that much time. And since Wednesdays is a short day, we left at 1.50 and that was the end of our day. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move us on to Thursday. It's now Thursday and I'm coming to you at the end of the day with the highlights for today. Here's our agenda and what we were able to cover today. So in math, we were practicing measuring and drawing angles and then the students took their mid-chapter checkpoint. And then in science, we did something really cool with energy, speed, and moving objects. The first thing we did was I set up a whole set of dominoes because we had a literacy connection with dominoes. And then I wanted the students to see how energy is transferred. The dominoes standing up were potential energy. And once I gave it one little push with my finger, it created a chain reaction where the potential energy turned into kinetic energy that got transferred through the whole entire domino chain. Here's a cool slow motion video of that illustration. We go. The students absolutely loved it and I was able to replay the video in slow motion so they could see it and discuss the scientific principles that were taking place. And then they got an opportunity to actually do an investigation lab where each team got a ramp, a rubber ball, a timer, and a ruler and they used their own textbooks to create the height of a ramp. So they started with maybe three or four books. They as a group decided how many books they wanted to start with. But after the first trial, they added more books. And then the last trial, which is the third one, they added even more books so that they can time and see how fast it took the ball to make it down the ramp. A lot of the teams were able to do it correctly and they were able to observe that the higher your start place, the faster the object moves down. So that was a really cool concept. So that's what we ended up doing in science and the students really enjoyed it. Then it was time for reading which we're continuing with our unit four, week five, which is a poetry unit. We did the read aloud, we went over the vocabulary, and then we ran out of time because I really wanted to focus on our informative essay, which I'm going to show you what we ended up doing. And after that, I had two students present their White House projects that weren't able to present earlier this week. And then we had to skip this for tomorrow because we ran out of time. In reading, we were going over imagery, denotation, and connotation. Those were some of our vocabulary words. And this is what we ended up doing in writing. 
So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more. We were using highlighters to highlight one of the paragraphs that I modeled for the students so that they can see the different colors that make up a body paragraph. I took out my little reading kits that are filled with different things to use in reading, but also in writing. So for today in writing, I only have the students take out these four highlighters. And I do not know why this is here. That's weird. And we use these highlighters to go ahead and color code the paragraph. So our transitions are highlighted in yellow. Our reason or idea sentence, which starts off our body paragraph, each body paragraph is highlighted in green followed by either elaboration, evidence, elaboration, etc. And we had a little bit of transitions here and there. And I told the students, it doesn't seem like we have a lot of yellow in the middle. So that's something that we can look at for revision purposes later. But I wanted them to see how a body paragraph can be made up of the different parts that they need to include in order to fully talk about their idea, which supports the main topic of their essay. All in all, that was mostly our day for Thursday, and now I'm getting ready to go and continue on with my day. So I will see you tomorrow, Friday. We have now made it to Friday. I'm coming to you at the end of the day. It's been a full day of learning, so I'll take you to the board, show you our agenda for today. A couple of things did need to get pushed to Monday, and that is okay because we are exactly where we need to be, so it's okay if we take a little bit more time on this. Here's our agenda for today. We were working on finishing our mid-chapter checkpoint, and I did have to move the investigate, join, and separate angles for next week because a lot of students still needed some support on this, and I wanted to make sure they knew how to draw angles and measure angles with protractors. Then we had a little break, and in social studies, we continued reading chapter five. We actually finished it. We had to split our social studies on Fridays this way because we have Spanish in between but we ended up reading the entire chapter and the students will get a chance next week to finish the foldable. I'll show you in a minute how that looks in case they didn't get to answer all their questions and then they'll take a test on this chapter. In reading, we did our shared read, but we were talking extensively about these poems. We really dissected them. I mean, looking at the board over here, you can see what we were even doing. Perseverance was the theme. And then I was giving them examples that were used in the poem and asking them what figurative language that was. So we found some personification, a simile, and hyperbole. And yeah, we really love doing that. And then of course, I wanted students to really learn and appreciate poetry. So one of the fun ways that I did that was to get one of the books in my library by Alan Katz. And it's really fun. So this is one of the two books that we have. It's titled, I'm Still Here in the Bathtub, Brand New Silly Dilly Songs. And basically what he did is these are poems that he put music to them. And this one uses Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And here are the three stanzas. And what I told students is songs are also poetry that you just put music to. So any of their favorite songs, if you look at the lyrics, the lyrics are written as poetry. So this is a fun book and I was singing a couple of these to the kids and they wanted me to do more. So yeah, we spent time appreciating poetry and books and that's why we quite didn't get to this part of the reading lesson. Then we went ahead and worked on finishing our informative essay, which I'll show you what we ended up doing today. And it was time for recess. So here is the second body paragraph that I showed you that we hadn't finished. We still haven't finished it, but it's pretty written well. There's a lot of information. There's one more thing we're gonna write about, which is BT corn. And one thing I did is I did color code it just so that they could see the different parts of this paragraph as compared to the other paragraph and all the intrinsic transitions that we have here. So they have one more page to finish that paragraph, write their last paragraph, and their conclusion is gonna be short. And then we'll be done with this essay on advancements in science. And that's all that we ended up doing today, jam-packed full day of learning, and now I'm ready to enjoy my weekend. So I hope you enjoy coming along with me on this four-day classroom vlog for this week of February. Next week is the last week of February, and it's also leap day next week, Saturday. 
very exciting. All right, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.